Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity number 11 in our Tetrix Prism programming guide. Now, um, what we are doing right now, we have, if you haven't already, we need to stop and we need to add the sensor pod. So if you're looking into the programming guide, the physical printed document, or you've downloaded it, go to the building interlude. Um, and it's marked for the sensor pod. And basically what you're going to do is add these two sensors and this little structure right here and make sure that they're plugged into your prism. So we've got the actual line finder sensor plugged into our digital port number three right here on top. I'll point to that. And then our ultrasonic sensor is actually plugged into our digital port number four. And again, the instructions for this are part of the building interlude, making your robot smart. Because we know, excuse me, we know that sensors actually allow the robot to sample the environment. And then uh, using that information from the environment, we can allow our robot to make more intelligent type decisions. So that's what this is all about, making our robot smart. So let's talk about what we need. Obviously, we have to have our prism uh, task spot built. <laughs> we have to have our prism on top, charge battery, sensors in the front, connections all the way they need to be. We need to have our USB cable and we have to have our computer. So once we've gathered all that up, let's go ahead and start by uh, opening our sketch. <coughs> Excuse me. In our Arduino software, we can go to the file menu option. We can go to examples down to Tetrix Prism and we are looking for Taskbot Activity 11 Drive to Align. Once we open that window, uh, I'm going to expand that, make it big enough so that we can see everything that we need and move this out to the side here. So we're going to start like we do and read our comments. And our comments in this particular example tell us that what we are going to need is our, our prism. And we are going to, when we execute the code, we're actually going to expect our prism to drive forward on a white colored surface to a black line and then stop. So let's talk a little bit about um, in our code. Um, if we've added anything new and we we really haven't in this one we're, we're using a lot of the same material that we've either covered in our getting started activities or our previous activities we kept it kind of simple but the idea is that we're combining though the actions of our motors with our sensors so if we look at our program we can see that we have in our setup and we've got our prism begin and our set motor invert if we go down to the void loop or our main loop, we can see that we're, we're reading uh, using an if statement where we're reading our prism.readline sensor. This is what we did in uh, one of the getting started activities with the if statements on the line sensor. We're setting um, a motor power based on that condition of the if statement. And then we're going down with a second if statement just like we did in our getting started activity with the intro to line finders. And we're reading our sensor again, and we're setting a secondary uh, condition if the sensor is in a different state. And then below that, we did we are adding, excuse me, a while loop. I didn't, I forgot to mention this, but we do have a while loop that we're actually implementing our, our uh, red LED with this, where during the while loop, uh, while the, um, the, robot is reading a, a black line, we're actually uh, flashing a light. So let's go ahead and let's download this to robot, see what happens here as we implement it. So I'm gonna attach my cable to my computer. I'm gonna attach the other end to my prism. Well, everybody should be familiar with this now. We're gonna power it on. We're gonna check for our lights. Got my blue light here, solid green light there should be able to go back into our code. Let's verify things just to make sure that it's correct. Looks like it is, and now I'm ready to upload. And again, if I can look at my prism, I should be getting data lights. <clears throat> Once those are done, solid green light there. I'm ready to 
uh, unplug this. And again, this time, I'm just like setting, uh, unlike setting it just on the floor and executing, we need to make sure that we have uh, a light colored surface with a black line that we can set our robot behind it. The idea is that we want our robot to drive to that line and then stop. So we're going to go ahead and set this down on the floor and see if we can make that work. Okay, now that we've actually seen our robot behave, let's let's talk a few minutes about some things that possibly if it didn't work out, there are some troubleshooting tips with the line finder sensor that you want to remember that um, the first thing, if things didn't behave exactly that we expected, we want to make sure that we check it's plugged into the right port. Um, it, you might have to check some height adjustment on our sensor. Again, the idea is that if it's over a white uh, um, background we should have a red LED on this the sensor and then when we move it over a black line it should go ahead and the red LED should go out so uh, you not need some slight adjustment I would again if you've got questions about that uh, check the programming guide for additional troubleshooting tips on that but it, it those are the things that you type of things that you want to look for if things didn't execute exactly as you expected the other thing that I want to make sure that we uh, recognize in the sketch um, we used uh, the if statements, which we're, uh, if you need a little refresher on those, we can go back to the getting started activities and the intro to the line finder for that. And then also we did talk briefly about the while loop, the idea behind the while loop that we added, that is if um, you, you have a test condition and that until that, that you reference and then until that test condition becomes false, you're going to do everything within that um the brackets for the while loop. But uh, other than that, it really was a fairly simple behavior that we actually implemented. Uh, so the idea is that we, we'd like for you to, to, to uh, uh, when you practice with it, maybe think about some additional behaviors that you could uh, come up with with the hacking the code. Oh, well, I forgot. Let's talk about real world activities, real world connections, because uh, we want to make sure that we make that connection for you. Uh, what are some of the things that this might be uh, similar to? Well, you know, smart cars now, right? Um, that are actually reacting to sensors and either braking on their own or uh, self-parking, those type of things. This is kind of very real world where um, uh, a mobile type uh, uh, mechanism like a car is implementing uh, sensors to be uh, smart devices where they actually can make intelligent decisions whether they see something and they break in time um, because the human reaction hasn't hasn't uh, taken over or uh, like uh, they look for a parking space and they, they uh, do a behavior based on the sensors and they actually self-park themselves so um, this is becoming more and more of a, of a uh, something that you see in the everyday uh, mechanisms that we we uh, are used to and then stem extensions we can talk about from the science uh, standpoint some of the velocity formula, uh, acceleration in a straight line, uh, from the technology standpoint, some of the while loops, reading sensor values, engineering, uh, just basic problem solving is becomes an important part of our engineering as uh, aspect of this. And then math, we can talk about calculations for distance, time, and velocity, uh, logic type statements. Uh, those are the kind of STEM extensions that we can talk about if we want to. But um, again, when we're talking about the open-ended challenge here, the idea is that we want you to try and recreate this on, on your own, like become familiar with the if statements and the structure of a sketch, and then uh, challenge yourself to kind of create some different behaviors. Um, if you want your robot, when it hits the black line, maybe have it back up, maybe have it turn, go in a different direction. So some of those, some of the things that you can do as you move forward with this in hacking the code. So I hope you found that informational. Hope you found it inspirational. And like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.